what's happening in the schools, we haven't really talked about social emotional learning. Um, what's happening in the schools is that the children are being programmed in the schools. Um, and, and, you know, when you've got schools telling kids to lean into their discomfort, right? If you're, a, you've got little kids. So when I had little kids, I would tell my kids, you know, trust yourself. If you, if there's something that bothers you, or you think there's something wrong about a situation, you need to trust yourself. You get that funny feeling in your stomach, right? Social emotional learning in the classroom is driving a wedge between the parent and the child and telling a child that if they feel uncomfortable, that it's their problem and they need to change that for the comfort of other people in the classroom. And so what you're talking about is incredible important because we have a school system that is, again, teaching kids that America is a, is a flawed country, a broken country, and that maybe they're not safe at home. And there's no future in that. Yeah. Well, I believe America is the greatest country in the world. I believe the future looks bright. And I believe the people that have the audacity, the resources, and the, the missing a few screws community that would be willing to fight against this union, I think they're out there. I think that community can be waken up and tapped into because that community is interested in long-term solutions. Uh, all the other stuff is great. We need to do it. Of course, blocking and tackling and all this stuff, yeah, we have to do all that stuff. Uh, but, but I don't think these guys are going to get any weaker until somebody's willing to finally stand up to them and for them to realize, oh, shit. You mean to tell me you would be willing to do this? Yes. Guys, this is bad news. And what if we go one year and the first year, the amount of people that maybe take uh, whatever off to go to school, let's just say we get a million kids to take one year off from going to public school. What if a year later we learn stuff? What if we're like, guys, we ain't never going back to public school. And then year two is 3.8 million. Year three is 6.9 million. Year four is 11 million. You're five, now they're coming begging, saying, what can we do? And we say, you have to get rid of the union, put it in the Constitution that you will never, ever have a union and teachers can get fired, okay? No more tenure. You can get fired. You know, there's an article that came out saying Gen Z found a hack against whatever the new setup is. And you know what their hack is? Work for the government because you will never get fired. That's right. Right? Go work for the government. Gen Z has discovered... Uh, 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 has discovered a new hack, which is work for the government. Well, just give me the tell right there. Gen Z has discovered the ultimate anti-layoff hack. Work for the government, right? What if all of a sudden these guys realize, oh, shit, I could get fired. You could, you could, Mr. and Mrs. Teacher. We appreciate your service, but you could get fired if you suck. If you're going out there telling, I saw one of the videos you guys posted on Moms for Liberty where the teacher is saying, listen, the moment I realize my parents are idiots. Guys, your parents are idiots. You're smarter than your parents. A teacher is saying that to kids? Yeah. Yeah, you're dividing. You're putting a wedge between parents and kids. Can we talk about that for a second? Go for it. Can you play the clip? Just pull up the clip while you're while you're talking about it. He'll find. Yeah. I'll find a clip and I'll take the it. wedge Go between the parent and yeah. the child. It, this happens in Florida. This, there are court cases all over. For, I want to say I want to give a shout out to public interest, interest law firms across the country. Conservative law firms like Southeastern Legal Foundation or Institute for Free Speech or um, ADF Alliance Defending Freedom, uh, Goldwater Institute. Uh, these are amazing groups that are doing. If you're giving money to these groups, God bless you because they are doing amazing work standing up for our rights across the country. But in schools across America, private conversations are happening between teachers and students behind closed doors where kids are making decisions about what name do they want to use at school? What name? The teachers are saying, what name would you like us to use when we call your parents and talk about you? What? In Florida, in Leon County, Florida, this happened to a mom, January Littlejohn, that her daughter was, put, was told, what sex would you like to sleep with? behind closed doors, um, and when you go on field trips. I mean, honestly, these private conversations happening in schools. And when, you know. No problem. Well, and, and here's the thing. I remember when I was 12, I, I wanted, I said I was going to be a vegetarian. It lasted for about six months. Mm -hmm. But I told all my friends, I told everybody, right? I'm going to be a vegetarian. I don't eat meat anymore. And I remember when I decided I wasn't going to be a vegetarian anymore that I felt embarrassed to tell people, mm -hmm. right? Now imagine you're 12 years old and you've told everyone at your school that you thought you were a boy. Yeah. 
How hard is it as a kid, right after you've been loved and told how amazing you are? And that's what schools are, are setting kids up for, this path that they can't get away from, that they feel locked into. And if you get put into a social transition program at a school, your chances of going down that path of medical transition are, are incredibly increased. And so schools are completely violating parental rights right now. And so I understand your long, you know, short term, long term. The short term issue that we have right now is that government schools think they know better than parents for their children. And we have to stand up and fight. So there are court cases happening all over the United States of America right now fighting back against this nonsense. And we're going to see how it turns out. But you know, uh, there, there's something called the Family Rights and Responsibilities Act that Senator Tim Scott just introduced into the Senate. Um, that is a very important bill that will help us to address uh, fundamental parental rights in our federal court system. Very important bill. Would Republicans be upset if we took uh, a million, 10 million kids out of public school and parents voluntarily chose to do it? Would Republican, would the establishment be upset? I don't Who, care. No, okay. So, <laughs> but, but the reason why I'm asking yeah. it. Yeah. I'm asking because I, I really don't give a shit. All I'm saying is from their standpoint, what would their argument be against it? Are they going to come out and say, well, we can't do this because we need the right leverage to negotiate and all this other stuff. I think, I think, uh, um, yeah, I think, um, oh my God, we can put a team of Avengers together for this. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.